and keep her moving. Then now she feels the collar. As soon as she stops, the collar shuts off. Then she gets to chase. Hi, Kat from Standing Stone Kennels here and we've got Rogue here again today. She's just about eight months old. So today we're going to be working on woe training with Rogue. She's been doing a great job in the field, pointing her birds, we've been shooting birds over her, uh, but it's time for us to ask a little bit more from her on the steadiness side of things. When we go into flush, I can say woe, but right now, if she'd rather go in and flush the birds, I have no way of stopping her. Because right now, all we've done is positively reinforce Woe um, with her positive pigeon drill. We've done a video on that in the past, which is on our YouTube channel. So if you've missed that, you can definitely go back and watch it. But we also need to move to the point where we can call our condition and reinforce that Woe behavior. Just like with all of the other behaviors we've worked on with recall and sit and kennel, all of those things we first taught using positive reinforcement and treats and clickers, and then we moved to the negative reinforcement and call our conditioning to those behaviors. So now we're ready to call our condition to the Woe behavior. So we laid the groundwork with positive pigeons. And then the first step that we're going to do with the woe training for collar conditioning is, first of all, put her belly collar on, which it's just going to be a matter of getting her comfortable wearing this. That's the first step. Get your puppy comfortable wearing a belly collar. So get her belly collar on here. This is the first time she's worn a belly collar. So we'll just have to gauge her reaction on this. And then I'm going to take her lead off because we don't need that anymore. Now she does have a neck collar on as well, which is a great thing that I love about DT Systems collars is that they have uh, systems that allow up to two, three dogs to be added on to. So I can use one for her neck and one for her belly. Now, primarily all we've been using the neck collar for has been um, recall and going on her dog bed and things like that. So I'm gonna try and avoid using her neck collar as much as possible. I'm gonna call her back here real quick. Um, see if I can use it. no collar to get her back. Rogue, good. So just get her back. I didn't use any collar. I'm gonna hold her, hold her still. She looks like she's pretty comfortable moving around with this belly collar already, but I'm gonna try and avoid using her neck collar in this session unless I absolutely need it for recall because we're trying to work on one specific thing today and that's stopping and not moving, which um, doesn't involve her neck collar. It's gonna involve her belly collar. So first step is get her comfortable wearing the belly collar. I don't want her really sitting with the belly collar either because I don't want her to um, think that sitting is an okay behavior while she's wearing this belly collar because woe is not when she's sitting there, it's when she's stopping and standing there. So I think she's about ready for it to be tightened up a little bit. Typically when you put the belly collar on your puppy for the first time or your dog for the first time, they might have a little extra air in their tummy. So that collar is not going to fit real snug and you want and it's okay if it doesn't fit real snug in the first little bit because we want her to feel comfortable moving around. Just a second here. Feel comfortable moving around with that. And if it's too tight, it's not gonna feel comfortable to move. So we're gonna let her move around. I'm actually gonna get a pigeon out for her to chase, which is kind of our middle ground step. Um, Cause she's done the positive pigeon woe. So she gets to chase. I see no issues with her feeling comfortable wearing that belly collar. Comes back. We'll give her one more here. Okay. So step number one, check. I think we've got it. So I'm gonna call her back over to me. Good, rogue. Yes. Yeah. So I can hold on to her for one more second so I can explain and check her belly collar. Yep, it's still nice and tight. And just like when you put your e-collar on your dog's neck, when you want it to fit properly around their belly, it needs to fit snug enough that the contacts are gonna make constant contact when we start using that. So next step, we'll be using stimulation. I'm going to make sure I'm switched over to my belly collar. I'm also going to make sure I'm switched down to a one on the collar, which is the lowest level of stimulation that we can use. Careful there, you're going to knock me over, girl. Super pumped up, that's what we like to see. But 
This next step is going to involve her feeling stimulation on her belly while she's moving. Stand up. Until she stops moving. Then I'm also gonna overlay with the pigeons again, still give her that positive reward of getting to chase once she stopped moving with the belly collar. Um, and then when she comes back, she's gonna feel the belly collar until we get her to stop moving again. Whoa, girl, knock me over. Um, <laughs> until we feel the belly collar, until she stops moving. Then once she stops moving, the belly collar will shut off and she'll get to chase again. Now, every dog, again, is gonna react to the collar on their belly a little bit differently um, and feeling the stimulation on their belly a little bit differently. Just like when we start with the e-collar on their neck, um, sometimes they look or shake their head or try and scratch at it. Same thing, she might turn and look or try and bite at the collar, do some spinning in circles. I, my goal is to not let off the belly collar stimulation until she stops moving because she needs to understand that the way that the collar shuts off is when she's not moving any longer. So we'll let her go because she's ready to do this next step and then start with some stimulation. Now I'm not gonna get the pigeon out because when I have the pigeon out, she already automatically stops. She understands this drill and this behavior and I am trying to get her to stop moving using the belly collar. And if she's already stopped moving, I can't stop her. So she's feeling the collar. She's feeling the collar. As soon as she stopped moving, it came off. Whoa. Okay. So when she comes back, she's gonna feel the collar again until she stops moving. So she felt a one, she stopped moving pretty quickly. So she moved again. So I'm gonna have this pigeon just out of sight. I'm gonna stop her again with the collar. She's feeling the collar. She stopped moving, collar shuts off. Now she gets to chase. So I noticed a mistake that I was making here in training with her is when she was coming up and she was stopping, with the collar, that was great. And then my movement of getting that pigeon out of the bag was causing her to move again. And then she was moving. So I want to anticipate needing my pigeon out but not having her stop with the pigeon and keep her moving. Then now she feels the collar. As soon as she stops, the collar shuts off. Then she gets to chase. So I'm gonna have my next pigeon ready hiding behind my back because I don't want her stopping because she sees that. I want her stopping because of the collar. So she's feeling the collar on a one, stops moving, collar shuts off. I've done a little bit where I'm moving my feet just a little bit while she's standing there. Okay. Almost take out the cameraman. So I wanna keep her moving a little bit. Feeling the collar, feeling the collar. Stops moving. Gets the chase. And I am out of pigeons. So we're gonna call Rogue back over to us. Come here. Again, I'm trying to avoid using that um, neck collar for the recall if I can at all possible. Um, but you saw in this video, step one was to get Rogue comfortable moving with the belly collar because I can't ask her to stop moving, which is the woe behavior, if she's already stopped moving or she won't move at all. So step one happened pretty quickly for her. She just started taking off running. If you um, if your dog's not comfortable right away, the pigeons are a really great way to help them get moving or getting to go out and just do a free run wearing the belly collar because we need comfort with the dog wearing the belly collar and moving with the belly collar on them. So step one happened pretty quickly for Rogue. Step two is she'll start feeling the stimulation on her belly, not when I have pigeons out there for her to see, but she feels that stimulation on her belly and stops moving. As soon as she stops moving, the stimulation shuts off. 
then I'm giving her that reward of chasing the pigeon again. So we're kind of overlaying some positive reinforcement with the negative reinforcement, as well as keeping that momentum of the training session going, of continuing to chase, continuing that movement that we need. Um, so we made really great progress in her first woe training session. We're pretty excited about that. Were there any specific questions that came up? Yeah. What can you use if you don't have access to homing pigeons? Um, just to get your dog comfortable um, moving around. Like I said, you can go for a free run, just running through the field so that they start moving. Um, you can go and play um, retrieving games. If your dog really likes retrieving games, you throw that bumper, they get to run, move out, chase, pick it up, bring it back. Um, and then another thing you can use, you can get kill pigeons. Just understand that every pigeon you throw away is not coming back. Um, but sometimes you need birds um, for certain dogs. I mean, if you, can't, if you can't get movement with the other two options or, or another option you come up with, then you might need to come up with a bird option. And if you don't have homers, a few kill pigeons. Um, I think we had seven in our bag today you know it's a pretty cheap training session so we had a question about rogues woe training video on how exactly to put the belly collar on so we're gonna shoot a short little video <laughs> explaining that rogue sees all the pigeons from earlier so we want the collar box with the contacts to be under her belly and we put it on same snugness like we do on the neck collar so I can fit a couple fingers under there, but it's nice and snug. And then I'm gonna tuck that collar strap up out of the way so that if she's uncomfortable with it and she turns to try and nibble or bite at it, she doesn't get a hold of that. So as you can see, just nice and snug. I can't pull down and have any gap between the collar box and her belly. Were there any other questions? Okay, great. Well, Rogue's Woe training is not complete yet, but this was the first few steps. We're gonna continue to reinforce this and then be back with uh, step three. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.